Today I'm going to be showing James how to uh, knock together some uh, door lines in and also how to fit them. James is uh, level 3 but he's a little bit green but we're just going to get him up to speed. So we ripped the uh, door casements down to uh, the width of the uh, stud plus two layers of plasterboard and two layers of skim. So the, the build upon that was 15mm each side plus the, well basically 30mm plus whatever this uh, width of the stud was, which was 94mm. So uh, we've ripped it down to the appropriate width. Now I'm just going to show James how to mark up, drill, count the sink, glue them together, get them nice and square. So, and when you're doing it, a little time saver, mark the bottom one and then just send your square through. Okay. So if you happen to mark two pieces of timber. Tape measure, measure in between. Okay, you got 170. So 1700, so that's 850. And uh, half of the 850 is 425. Yeah. So say that down that end, 425 from the centre. Next thing you do, is we're going to get our drill down to sink. So half inch with uh, three eighths of the plate. <laughs> five sixteenths of an inch or something like that. Decide which side your door is going to open onto. I would actually flip this upside down, look. So then you've got your door on two deep, two decent faces. So just mark door on that side just so you've got a point of reference. And what you're going to do is you're going to mark out, we're using 45 millimetre doors. So just quickly mark out where your 45 mil is going to go. Now you want your countersink to finish behind that point. So you'll come in probably about 10 mil from that mark and do your first drill. And what that means is when you screw it and fix it and secure yeah, you it, can't see it, you can't see it because this is all going to be covered with a slamming strip. So what it means is it's one less job for the decorator to do. Yeah, it's just unnecessary, it puts more time on the job. Mark it wherever that is, 10 mil back from where your door line is, and then set it to that. So in this instance, it's 80, 80 and a half mil, but I'll set it to 80 just for argument's sake. So now you know, but your first drill is going to be 80 mil. 80 mil, 80 mil, 80 mil. Measure the next set of holes. And the only thing you have to consider when you're doing this is that we've got 15 mil makeup of plasterboard and skin from that face. So what we're going to do? So I could just come in about 30 mil, and that gives you just plenty to go with. Once again, it's all going to be covered by your slamming strip. Go through. Okay, next step. I just want you to place that just under there. That's it. Next step, we're going to get ourselves this pilot drill. I'm going to go to 6mm. Now the reason why I'm doing that is because I want these holes to be extended outwards enough so that when I put them in, they're not fouling on the sides, the threads aren't fouling. Because if we leave the uh, pilot drill to the size that we've left it, your screw's going to be binding on it and you're not going to have any adjustment on your wedges. So that's why you always make sure after you've counted some, you drill it out to a bigger sized hole. So Screw it doesn't have to be six mil, it can be, a, it can be as low as five, five point five, but that just happens to be the drill off got and it works. So I'm just gonna give this uh this door frame a bit of a going over, it's just a bit of a 120 grit, so uh, it'll be uh, good enough for the uh, decorator to come work his magic. And as I say, you only have to really worry about the bits where it's gonna be seen. Okay. And the next job is to get the header machined up. You've got two different rebates on this, obviously to take two different doors. We're going for a 765. Now, once again, we're going to make a decision uh, what side the door's going to be on. I always look for the best face, which is this, because it's a uh, nice plain edge, and it's got no, it's got, this has got uh, less knots on the side, so it's uh, one less thing, once again, for the decorator to have to deal with. So obviously, this is an extreme example of what sometimes you have to deal with. This is absolutely terrible. This is why you always survey it. Don't, don't just blindly uh, start banging your door frames together. This is the decision. The door's going to go on this side here. So 
once, another, once again, another little thing that you always look out for. Get a couple of holes in there. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be countersunk, but to get one, two, three, one, two, three, each side. Showing the start with the classic apprentice special, which is a, a multi-set. This is what we all started off with. Okay, yeah, five feet. Five feet, fantastic. About an inch in. First thing you do is turn all this out. So, door side, door side, door side. So when you fold all this together, the door side goes all in one place. Get a generous amount of glue on there. Now, Tony loves to use his fingers, as you've seen on quite a few of his videos. Ends up looking like a five-year-old that's eating custard, but not nothing. Spread it round. Be sure to get some on the shoulders, that's quite an imperative part of it, and then just spread it round so it's everything's covered. Door face into door face. Make sure the edges are all nice and flush. Spot on. Send it home. So move that up. That's it. With it. Make sure she's flush. Next step, put the rag, clean up. So, this is a nice happy accident, which doesn't happen very often. Because we've had to rip these down to the appropriate width, the rebate is actually bang on what we need for the baton. So, this is going to act as a really, really good spacer. And what we'll do, I'm going to come up probably about 100mm past my first screw hole because that means I can put, put the batter in and then when I'm fitting it, my drill, you know, if, you, if you're having to SDS drill it or whatever, it just gives you plenty of clearance. So if you do have an off cut, that's absolutely fantastic. So what we'll do, go on to the 765, spread it open, and there we go. That's absolutely spot on. So get the pilot drill. So now we know the legs are all nice and parallel, the next thing to do is to get them square. Clamp your first one in place, so you just knock it over it until it's square. And get your clamp on the other side, which is James is going to do right now. So then all we do, get another off cut of baton. So now we know that that's holding nice and square. That's all prepped and ready. That's all nice and square. These are all nice and parallel. And it's all ready to go. So uh, next stage is uh, we're going to throw them into the hole. We've got all the uh, wedges machined up. Make sure you get the thing the right way around. Remember what we did earlier about the door? Now typically, unless there's an exception to the rule, the door always opens into the room, doesn't it? So that's what we'll be looking for. Get the two points level. Now we uh, did have a 15 mil. So first thing you're going to do, James, get that right. So you have a 15 mil representative of your plastic board and plastic, skin. Plastic board and skin. So we've got the same both sides. What you're going to do? You're going to lift it off. Stick your first spike in, and then level across. 15 mil. Get your first spike in. Then you're going to plumb down this way. Fix at the bottom when you know it's abs absolutely plumb. You'll do this off your six foot level, and then you'll do the same on this side and working your way across. And then, as soon as you get all your fixings in, you're not going to tighten them up, you're going to start plumbing up from this direction. So, you're going to get this at the right height, then you're going to get plumb from this angle, then you're going to get it plumb from this angle, then you're going to get it plumb from the internal. This way, because you're trying to get your margins right. And also, when you do, when you check in plumb, I always go off the side that it's opening onto. The side that it's going to be hinged. So if you look there, it's got to come in at the bottom. So you'll just tap that along. And what I like to do, just put one in like that. Put one in like that. Give it a little tap. What that does is that now makes that rigid. So what you can do, you can tap that without any risk of it springing around. So now all you do, you get that and you just start tapping it, but you don't want to damage it. How's that look to you? Yeah, pretty good. Okay, good. So now you're going to put a screw loose in each and every one of these holes. Okay, 
Okay, next step, move on to this side, exact same thing. You can see where it needs to go, but it needs to be tapped in towards me. Actually, that's, that's quite spot, quite on, spot on, yeah. Okay. You want to, want to give yourself a good starting point, so what you'll do, you'll loosen this off, and you, what you're going to do, you're going to equalise the gap between the studs and your door frame, both sides up, just so you know you've got plenty of adjustment to get it all plumbed up. So, but loosen that off. Get your wedge in here, just send it home. Okay, look at the other side. How's that look? They look pretty much the same. Get your wedges, one in both sides. Put them in very lightly. You do the same on the other side. Okay? That's it. Okay, now just nip those up, but don't over tighten. Okay, lovely stuff. Now we've got our good starting point. What you're going to do, you're going to get your six foot level, and you're going to plumb down that way. What's it saying? Got to come the back. lining's bowed, isn't it? Yeah, the lining's very bowed. This is the, this is the particularly bowed one, but what we're gonna, but because of the wedges and the screws, we will be able to pull it about and make it something in there. Start tightening your screws and pull it, pull it in until it's somewhere in there. Start at the bottom. Now that is bang on between the lines. So what we'll do, get a wedge in there, look, and get a wedge in your side. Okay, walk well, that, okay, send it tight, them up, but don't over tighten it. That's it. Now, we know that that's nice and plump. So what we do now, is with our wedges and with our screws, we make sure that there's not one piece of daylight between the bottom, the top, and this straight edge. So you can see what you need to do, can't you? Yeah. It's gonna come out, it's gonna come out slightly here, but what you do is you just start at the top and just slowly work your way down. down. Make sure you don't over tighten anything and make sure you don't put, start bulging things past your straight edge, okay? And to be fair, if I were you, I would try and stand this side of it. Mm -hmm. so, because obviously this is the, the bit where the door's open in the woods and this is the important part of it. Look out for wedges with uh, knots in them because they're very weak. That's it. Okay. How's that back to the other side? How's that look? My side's pretty good. Okay, so nip that up. Okay, check your inside again, make sure you're not too far out. Okay, so same on the other side now. Right, so all nice and plumb this way, that way. We checked with that uh, square, but you're all good. And that's me all perfect. The only thing left what I said was to check your parallels. Yeah, I know. What are you going to do? 765. Then every so often, you're going to check the 765. Now, there is a slight amount of indiscrepancy. Uh, it's quite literally of like a millimetre. What we need to do, if you were uh, disconnect that button, look. We're just going to do a little bit of fine tuning. And now I know that's Bob on. Okay, so 76.5, a bit. 76.5. See what that needs. A tiny amount of adjustment. Okay, so 765. 765. 765. So just give it a final tighten up on both sides. And then we just trim the wedges off. And we're done. Yep. All you do, just do one last check. Plum. Plum. Not least, square. That's how you do it. Okay, okay after that. I've shown you how to put together and install door frames. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Well, do you want, do you want yeah. something like that? Yeah.
So anyway. <laughs> so, so, so boys. boys. <laughs>